In the previous video, I shared with you guys severe voltage drops in my system. I also shared with you tools to fix this issue and promise you a follow-up video. Well, this is part two, and we begin with the SuperCap, the UC31 by iOxys. Will this Bluetooth capacitor be enough to fix my problems? Stick around. I think you'll be shocked by the outcome. Guys, I have a problem. I currently own two of the most powerful subwoofers that SCAR Audio has to offer. But the problem isn't the woofers, it's more so my expectations of a 145 dB SPL score. And as many of you more experienced people would know, to put up big numbers you need big power. And in order to do this safely, your power needs to be clean, but not only clean, it needs to be constant. My current system has voltage drops near 11 volts, and that is nowhere near being constant. So today I'll swap the AGM batteries with the capacitor and see if this eliminates the fluctuations. Before we do that, let's compare these two technologies and sort through some of their cons and pros. Because from what I've learned, depending on your application, one isn't necessarily better than the other. Lead acid batteries tend to have greater capacitance, or what some would call having greater reserve. This means that they hold their charge for longer when never not being assisted by the alternator. But on the downside, these batteries are sensitive to low voltage, and they do tend to be quite heavy. They have no internal protections against an overcharge, and their lifespan is 15 times shorter. The capacitor, on the other hand, has a superior discharge and can be fully charged within seconds. It's more weather resistant, rated at a million cycles with a 99% charge efficiency. On the downside, capacitors don't store as much energy per charge as that of a battery. And whenever not connected to a constant power source, they do tend to suffer from self-discharge. If you are enjoying this video and would like to learn a little bit more about how to simplify car audio, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Okay guys, as you see, we do have a little bit of safety precautions back here. Got the fire extinguisher in case anything crazy happens. Right now the voltage is sitting stable at about 14.2 volts. What we're going to be doing is we're going to get some music playing here and we're gonna see exactly what this ultra capacitor can do. Right. And there it is again, guys, 11.6 volts. This time it's even lower than the last time. It's seven of a tenth time lower than the first score. Okay guys, I didn't really like what I just seen in the trunk, but it kind of gave me an idea. What exactly is going on up front, right? I mean, this is my main battery. The capacitor back there is supposed to take the brunt of things as far as the speakers. So I'm not even gonna edit this. This is very, this is very, very uh, intriguing to me. I was surprised by what I seen in this test right here. So I'm not gonna edit this video. I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna give it to you guys exactly the way that it is. Let's get some bass. Sorry for the shaky video guys. I wanna give this here to you uncut, unscripted, no fancy anything, just the numbers. And yeah, I did 
not restart the song so like i said i want to be completely transparent with this because i want you guys opinion on what you think is going on here remember this is the same song same system same volume right but look at the voltage the voltage does not drop below 13 volts now let's look back here and as you guys can see it looks like the speakers are going more hammered than it was the first time. The capacitor is in run mode. There's no error. And guys, let me just say, you can feel the difference. The capacitor is definitely an improvement as far as the punch that it has. But let's take this to the back. And I wanted to do a continuous walk of this. And we're gonna get it plugged up here again, unscripted, unedited at all. And yes, I just did put that in a 12 volt. <laughs> like I said, I'm not even gonna edit that out. I'm, I'm gonna now find me an actual ground. And there you go again, the fluctuations. Now granted, it's not getting as low as it was the first time, but watch this. Depending on what beats you playing, there it is. All right, guys, as you all can see, I am not out of the woods just yet. Simply adding an ultra capacitor did not completely solve my problems. Yes, it recovers a lot faster, and yes, it stays well within voltage the majority of the time. However, my voltage still does dip into unwanted territories, and it fluctuates way too much for my liking. This is a clear sign of the stock alternator not being able to keep up with the demands and therefore it relies heavily on the capacitor and battery to handle the massive drops. So please stay tuned for the next video to see if installing a 320 amp alternator from Mechman give me the stable voltage I desire. Thanks for visiting the channel to help you simplify car audio. It's the Budget Bass here and I'm out. Thank you.